Hello everyone, this is Meghnath. Welcome back. In this module, we talk about the data type that's most frequently used one, which is strings. So when you're writing some programming, you deal with different types of data, like int, float, boolean. So the most frequently used one is strings because you deal with data that comes from a flat file or from an Excel sheet. So you need to convert the data into strings and then you need to work with it. So it's very much necessary for us to understand in detail about how strings are stored internally and how these uh, things work so that we can write efficient and write programming. So let's get started. Now, when you write, let's take for example, this is your computer memory. Let's assume this is a computer memory. Normally computer memory is categorized into two types. One is stack memory and one is heap memory. So heap memory, let's assume it's a huge memory. Normally stack memory will be limited, like maybe 40 MB or 50 MB or 100 MB, 200 MB, or that depends on uh, processor to processor and application to application. Now let's assume that this is a stack memory and let's assume this is a heap memory, which is huge. And now when I write int a is equal to five, so we all know that integer, let's assume that each cell here takes two bytes. So each cell takes two bytes, two bytes, two bytes, two bytes. Let's assume like that. Now, when I write int a is equal to five, all of us know that integer takes four bytes. So it'll take two, two cells here because each cell is two bytes. So it'll be stored like this. Now, when I write after that, I declared short b is equal to four. Now short, all of you know that short takes two bytes of memory. So it's taking one cell here and B is storing four. Now let's assume that I want to declare C is equal to Meg. Now, now each character, all of us know that in Java, each character takes two bytes of memory. So here I gave six cell, six bytes, so indicating three cells. Now MEG is stored here. Now let's assume that string is stored like this, but it will not be stored like this. And I'll explain why. Now after that, we have last variable, which is D, which is six. So short two bytes, so one cell. And here I have depicted like this. So D is equal to six, and that's storing only two bytes of memory. Now, now what happens, let's take after this here, after this four lines, when I write A is equal to six, or when I write A is equal to 16. Now this five will be overridden with 16. So we all know that as long as A is assigned within the range of the values that it can store, it will be storing in the same location. Now when I write A is equal to 30, no problem. It will be stored, this 30 will be stored in the same location and the value will be overridden. But the problem comes when we reassign a string. Now let's assume I'm writing C is equal to, I'll write here Meghnath. Now I'm writing my name. Now, when I write like this, now that cannot be stored in this. Now, when I write make now, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it requires 8, 8 into 2, 16, 16 bytes, but I cannot push it because there is other variable sitting here. So for that reason, so I cannot store, I cannot store this MEG here because if I store it, when I'm, when I'm changing a string, it's not able to push it and it's not able to store here. So for that reason, Java designers and the programming designers came with two concepts called value types and reference types. Now, now whichever, whichever variables or data types are fixed size, like integer is fixed size, short is fixed size, long is fixed size. So all the value, all the data types which are fixed size are categorized into value types. And the variables or the data types which are not fixed fixed size, for example, string. So string is not fixed size because when you're changing a value, it cannot store in the same size. So now that is categorized into reference type. Now how this will be stored? Let's try to understand. Now, when I declare C, string C is equal to meg, so that meg will not be stored in here. So the C will not hold meg. So somewhere else in the heap memory, make will be stored. And the address of this, let's assume the address of this is 1000. Now that will be stored here. So, so now strings 
the actual data is stored in heap memory and the address of that will be stored in the variable okay so that's how uh, that's how reference types are stored so string is a reference type and the variable will hold the address and the actual value is stored in reference type heap memory now when I change C is equal to Meghnath now let's assume I'm changing C equal to Meghnath now in that case somewhere in the heap memory it will again recreate it will recreate Meghnath now this address let's take 1005 so that address will be stored here in C so that's why strings are called immutable so what is the meaning of immutable means you cannot change in the same location every time you create or every time you reassign a value of a string it will be created at a new location so that's why it's called immutable so the reason why strings are immutable because you're not changing the same string again and again you're recreating the string again and again so every time when you change a string a new string will be created it's not modifying the existing string okay now now let's try to understand how do we compare strings let's say this now now when I declare a string a is equal to make and I'll, as I explained previously this let's assume that this is uh, a and obviously make will not be stored here and it will be stored somewhere in the heap memory and a will be pointing to it now when I write string b is equal to make so it will also point to the same make which is there in the heap memory so when I write a is equal to b obviously both are referring to the same address so it will be true so when I write string a is equal to make and string b equal to make when I compare a equal to b both are pointing to the same address so it will be true and the value is also make now now strings can also be created in other way so this is called string literal string literal way of creating now strings can also be created using new string so now let's see how it works now let's assume that I'm declaring string C is equal to new string of make now in that case it will not point to the same make that is created in these places it'll create all new string and it'll assign make for it now let's see how it works now here now I have written string C is equal to new string make so in that case this C will be somewhere here and that will point to all new uh, string that's created new data that's created in the heap memory and that's new one so when you try to compare a is equal to C so a is pointing to this make and C is pointing to this make so both are not equal although the data is same make and make both the holding same data but since they are pointing to the different address so it will give false so if you really want to compare the value of the variables then you have to use a dot equals C so in this case it will check for the value of a which is make value of C which is make so in this case it will run true now let's try to understand let's try to do a simple program in uh, Eclipse ID and let's try to understand this more clearly so I hope you are clear with the concepts of how string is stored string variables will not be holding the actual data the variables will be holding the memory and strings the actual data is stored in heap memory now let's see in Eclipse ID let's get started okay. now what I'll do is I just open Eclipse ID with a small project I just created now what we will do is I'll simply write here string a is equal to make and string b is equal to make now as per my explanation previous uh, sometime back so both are pointing to the same reference that's stored in heap memory so both should be equal so if I write here if I write here if a is equal to b if a is equal to b I'll just write SYSO equal and now I'll write here else SYSO I'll write here not equal and now let's run the code now you'll see here it's showing as equal because both will be pointing the same memory as I explained now if I create B in a different way or let's create I'll create C string C is equal you can create like this as well new string of make now in this case I'm creating C I want to create as a new string separately and I assign make for it now I'll try to compare C 
Now all the both are holding A is holding Meg and C is also holding Meg. So let's try to run this code. Let's see what happens. Now it's giving us not equal because both are not pointing the same memory in heap. So Meg is separate one and this is also a separate one as I explained. Now what if I want to compare the value of these two? So in that case you have to use A dot equals. So now if you want to compare you have to use A dot equals and here I just click on this equals and I can compare here C. So when I compare A dot equals C, in this case it'll compare the value. Now when I run this code, now you'll see here it's it's giving equal. So it's always good to compare strings using A dot equals because we never know whether it's a new string that's got created or whether it got created using a string literal. So it's good to use uh, A dot equals to compare strings. I hope you're clear with how strings are created and what is value type and reference type and how do we compare strings and when the values will be equal and when the values will not be equal. So I hope this is clear. See you in the next module. Thank you.